Hi, I'm Rich Turner, and in this session we're going to talk about the improvements coming in Windows 10 Creator Update for Bash on Windows and the Windows Console. We're absolutely amazed to look back and find that Bash on Windows is only eight months old. It feels like it's been around for a lot longer, but it's been absolutely amazing to see the reception that this thing has gotten. From its initial unveiling during the keynote at Build 2016, to the first few builds of the Windows 10 Insiders program that we delivered Bash WSL into, has been incredible for us because we've gotten so much feedback from you that helped us ship a really decent version in Windows 10 Anniversary Update, which shipped in the summer of 2016. We have been absolutely genuinely blown away, and on behalf of the whole team, I would like to thank our community who have been amazing with us in helping us understand what features you need, what issues you are finding, whether it was working for you or not, uh, what things we should focus on, etc. The feedback you've been giving us is tremendous, and it's helped us build a much better product than we would have done without your assistance. So a sincere thank you to all of you. And a thank you to all of you also who have taken to the public forums and discussed Bash WSL in Twitter, in Reddit, on Hacker News and elsewhere, sharing with us your experiences, your frustrations and so on as well, and again, helping us build a much better product. So if you've not seen Bash on Windows before, let's just do a very quick recap of what this thing is all about. Fundamentally, we have two pieces to this technology story for Bash itself. We have the thing that we call Bash on Ubuntu on Windows, which is a genuine Ubuntu distribution provided by Canonical, the creators of Ubuntu Linux. Uh, it's just the user mode portion of Ubuntu, however, because underneath that, we provide the Windows subsystem for Linux, which is a new module or a new subsystem within the Windows kernel that emulates the behavior of a Windows kernel implementation. That allows us to take the Ubuntu user mode bits and run them directly on the Windows kernel without any modification to the, uh, to the Ubuntu or to the GNU tools uh, that, that you want to be able to use during your development uh, projects. This allows us, therefore, to load and run Linux binaries unmodified directly on Windows. So what is Bash and WSL for? Well, Primarily, developers. We really built this thing to help developers overcome the many challenges faced when trying to run modern day development tools, modern data development technologies on top of Windows. A lot of these uh, modern tools and some of the more traditional tools that are very useful in the development uh, environment are primarily built for or built with Unix and Linux in mind. And some of these things uh, have challenges running smoothly on Windows. So we decided to build the Windows subsystem for Linux and to introduce Bash on Windows to allow all of you who are building mobile apps, web apps, websites, uh, open source technologies themselves, to be able to run these things natively on Windows without having to drop into VMs and fire up big expensive resource VMs, which while very useful for some scenarios, are somewhat of a, of a labor uh, to, to be able to use effectively. And we're only focusing on command line tools right now. The Windows subsystem for Linux, uh, as we continue to build it out, does start to introduce more and more features that eventually allow things like some X applications, uh, GUI applications for Linux, to be able to run on WSL. But we're only focusing our efforts and supporting command line tools at this time. If you manage to get your favorite X tools to run, then we're more than happy. We're not doing anything to prevent those things from running. We're just not focusing our efforts in that space right now. So go have fun with X tools, but understand that we're focusing most of our effort on getting command line tools, compilers and debuggers and, and optimizers and so on, uh, working really smoothly on Bash on Windows. So the other part of this story is the Windows console. Most of you will think of this thing whenever you fire up a CMD shell or you fire up PowerShell. This is the ubiquitous console or terminal, if you come from the Unix background, uh, the console or terminal application that runs all command line applications on Windows. 
It's an interesting uh, architectural feature of Windows that whenever you start a command line application, it automatically spins up a new console window for you. In the Linux world, you start up a console and tell it which command line application to run. So there's a slight difference there in the way that Windows works. But we've basically been taking the Windows console and giving it its first major overhaul in almost 30 years. The console code base is quite long established. It's been in part of Windows since day one. And we've been modifying it and improving it to allow it to run not just more and more and more Windows tools and to light up features from Windows features like PowerShell, but also to be able to run Unix tools which tend to declare their formatting and their color requirements and their layout in a, in a stream of data that's embedded within the text that gets sent to the console to, to render on screen. So these VT sequences, these virtual terminal sequences, were somewhat lacking in the console of old. And during the Windows 10 cycle, we've been adding more and more and more VT support to support greater number of colors, better layout, better formatting, and better compatibility with Linux and Unix tools overall. This has now enabled us to be able to run native Ubuntu, Ruby, and Sed, and Grep, and Orc, and Node, and Java, and all of these tools that you're used to, as well as some of the more useful tools that you use on a daily basis when working with Linux and Unix itself. So this major overhaul is currently underway. You'll start, we'll talk in just a moment about some of the improvements that you'll see coming to the console in particular. Um, but this, this, this improvement will roll out over the next few versions of Windows. We have a lot of work to do, and the team are busy uh, uh, taking the Windows console code base, modernizing it, cleaning it up, and getting it into a much better shape so that we can, uh, we can better roll with uh, new advancements and new features in the future. So, in Windows 10 Anniversary Update, the version that shipped in the summer of the, uh, 2016, we shipped the first real version of Windows Subsystem for Linux. It's marked as a beta feature because we're not quite done with it yet. We know that when we shipped uh, Windows Subsystem for Linux for uh, Windows 10 Anniversary Update, there were a number of incompatibilities, there were some things we had yet to finish off. But the feedback that we've been getting from the audience and from the community has been absolutely phenomenal and no one wanted us to wait and to hold back on this thing, so we decided to ship it as part of Windows 10 AU. It also includes huge improvements to the Windows console, supporting Nix applications in particular, and we'll see some further improvements as we move forward. So Windows 10 gives us a great basis to work from. The minute that we shipped uh, Windows 10 Anniversary Update, our teams continue to plow forward, however. They've been plowing forward in making a number of improvements, um, not just to Windows Subsystem for Linux and improving its ability to run more and more and more Linux tools, but also big improvements coming to the console as well that we'll see in just a moment. So, when it comes to Windows Subsystem for Linux, the key improvement that we've been making over the last few weeks and months is a broader and deeper support for the syscalls that the Linux kernel normally uh, provides to user mode applications. We've been implementing more and more and more of those syscalls and improving the depth of implementation of some of the syscalls that are really key and fundamental to many technologies like Go and Node and Ruby and Java and MySQL and Apache and so on. So we've also been making some improvements to our networking stack. One of the interesting things about WSL is because it's just a largely a translation layer at the top end of the NT kernel, when you're running a Linux application on top of WSL, you're actually taking advantage of and making use of the Windows networking stack and the Windows driver stack underneath it. So when you, for example, want to ping something using, uh, using the Ubuntu or the, the GNU uh, ping utility, then you're actually talking down through the Windows networking stack. There's no Linux code actually involved at all in WSL itself. So we've been having to do some work to, to mate the two uh, philosophies of Linux and Unix and how the Windows networking system works versus how the Linux networking system work. And we've been doing a ton of work to make some significant improvements there. Um, things like ping that were missing from a Windows 10 anniversary update turned out to be quite a lot of work to make work properly because of the differences in, where, in the way Windows and, and Linux work in that space. 
Uh, but now that's all been added to the latest builds of the Windows 10 uh, uh, creators update uh, that have been rolling out over the last few weeks to insiders. Uh, IF config is one of the most useful tools in Linux that allows you to enumerate and to evaluate your available network connections and their IP addresses and their DNS settings, etc. that a lot of tools use and rely upon in order to configure themselves properly. Uh, that feature is currently missing, but we have an implementation that's bubbling up through our build stack right now, and hopefully within just a few weeks of you seeing this, we'll actually be able to get that feature finally put to bed as well, unlocking a huge raft of technologies that are waiting for that feature to roll out. And for, uh, for a lot of you who are very, very keen for this feature, we rolled out 16.04 support. So support for Ubuntu 16.04, Xenial, uh, rolled out just a couple of weeks ago to insiders, and the feedback has been phenomenal. Uh, very, very, very few issues have been discovered in supporting uh, Ubuntu 16.04, and uh, we've been making sure that we're polishing that, that, uh, the, the, uh, that implementation of the extra syscalls that we had to add to support 16.04, and the depth of some of the syscalls that we had to support as well. And we'll be rolling that out with the Windows 10 Creator update uh, to everyone else uh, who's not on the Insiders builds when it ships in the spring 2017. One of the other key features that we're shipping in uh, in this next release is what we call interop. It's not really interop between applications as we think of it, it's interop between the Bash and the Windows environments. There are quite a few philosophical differences between how Linux and Unix work and how Windows works, and we've been trying to work to bring those worlds closer together to provide you more flexibility and more convenience when running Bash. For example, a lot of people have said they would love to be able to run Windows applications from within Bash so that they might prefer to write a bash script to automate a complex build, for example, and they'd like to be able to build the Windows part of the application as part of that overall build process. So, just to show you here on screen, you can now type a path to a Windows exe and invoke that executable from within Linux bash without having to switch to a Windows console and switch back again like you had to in Windows 10 anniversary update. This ability allows you to reach into any application that you can reach in your C drive, your D drive, or your fixed mounted drives. You can reach into there from within Bash, and you can invoke any executable you like. You can also add those paths to your Linux path, and we'll do the path lookup for you. You can also create aliases if you prefer, so that you can specify the exact path to a given tool, and maybe some parameters to pass to it, to make it easier, easier still for you to invoke Windows applications. The other side of this also is that there are people who want to build uh, complex build systems and automation systems in Windows and to be able to invoke Bash applications to make some of their job easier when, for example, compiling certain open source libraries, for example. So you might want to take PowerShell here, for example, and call into Linux itself, passing the command in with the minus C option, which passes your command raw straight through to Bash, executes inside Bash, pipes the output back, so that you can get hold of standard out and standard error, and you can make decisions based upon what feedback you get from the Linux tool after it's executed. So using these two tools, we've now brought the gap between Windows and Linux much closer together and made it much, much easier and much more productive for you to use Bash or Windows and just use the right tool for the right job when you need it. We also made a ton more console improvements. We had to make a number of improvements to the console in Windows 10 Anniversary Update just to be able to run Bash applications. But one of the features we've shipped recently, which a lot of you got very excited for, was finally supporting full 24-bit color. The Windows console previously was limited to 16 colors and made the UI less than glamorous at the best of times. Now we've got full 24-bit color. If you embed VT sequences into your text that you send to the console to render, we can render full 24-bit color text even if you're doing trivial things like piping your fortune through Cowsay and then through lolcat to color it. 
We've also made a ton of improvements to the way in which we handle a number of complex layout VT sequences to put the right things in the right places on the screen when you're rendering a UI as sophisticated as, as Midnight Commander here, or things like Tmux, or Vim, or Emacs, etc. So a number of the scrolling issues that some of you bumped into in Windows 10 Anniversary Update have all gone, and things now behave much, much better and, and pretty much as you would expect them to run on a native Linux machine. And we added mouse support. A lot of you, even the command line junkies, still like to be able to use a mouse to be able to click menus, like you can see here in Midnight Commander, or select files to move between panes in Tmux, etc. And that's also now in the, uh, in the latest builds and will be coming out in Windows 10 Creator Update in next spring for the rest of you. And we're not done yet. We have a long way to go yet until we can fully say that this thing is really comprehensively compatible with the majority of the tools that you want to use. But to get there, we need your help. We can only test so far, we can only test so deep. What we need is your help, if you would, to fire up a Windows 10 Insiders Build instance and run your code, run your tools, host your websites on Apache, access your MySQL database from your Java code, whatever it is that you normally do on Linux to build an application, whether it's in Go, in Erlang, in C, whatever you use, please give it a try on Bash WSL, and importantly, file bugs on us. We love your bugs. I cannot tell you how many times we have been so excited to see a bug come in that's highlighted a problem that we weren't aware of, but we are absolutely committed to fixing. It really makes our life a lot easier and helps us build a product that we can all use and be far more productive with. So just before we let you get back to your busy day, I wanted to leave you with a few resources for you to learn more about Bash WSL and what we're doing here with the command line tools in general. The top link here will take you to a page which will inundate you with information and details about the internal workings of Bash WSL, how processes are managed, how the networking system works, how the file system works, etc. And that's a great place for you to dig in if you want to learn about more about the internals of this thing and how it all hangs together. The WSL Docs link will take you to our MSDN page where we have instruction on how to install, how to manage and configure this feature. And we have our CLI blog that we're, where we talk about a lot of stuff that's command line oriented, not just Bash, but also the command line console itself and uh, PowerShell as well. I'm also at richturn underscore ms on Twitter. And if you'd like to reach out to me, if you have issues, if you have questions or problems, feel free to do so. I'm very active on Twitter and I should be able to get back to you pretty soon. So with that, I'll leave you to get back to your fantastic day and we look forward to hearing from you soon.